Gentlemen, it's an honor to meet you all. How's it going? Good, thank you. <laughs> How you doing, man? Welcome right. back to Reebok's Clough. This is where you guys shot the video for It's Time. Yes. Why exactly did you choose this venue? What makes it so special, man? Well, it was all inspired actually by the director, Ludi van Rene, who came up with the concept. Uh, I worked with him on, on one of my music videos called Let It Rain, and uh, I knew that he was a great visual guy, and he thought about having a place where we can stand together, look over an area, almost like proclaiming the message over the city. We found this amazing spot and he took us up there and we just like, yes, this is the place. Oh, beautiful. How did you feel when Heinz approached you guys and asked you to jump on board with this check? When he asked me to do it, I immediately wanted to be a part of this. You cannot live in South Africa and not see difference every day. But it's beautiful, it's awesome. The, the problem is that we are divided, not that we are different. And I wanted to be a part of, mm. part of that. I believe in unity, I believe in a country coming together, but if the song sucked, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because unity songs always suck. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but not this one. This, this one, one is good. really this good. One good. This Beautiful one is now. really Beautiful good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys feel your fans will relate? The first time we really kind of got together, the significance of singing the song was right here on this hill to sing the song together as a, as a group. Following morning, um, we were then on Expresso, and it was the first time we were actually now are really performing the song. And I think all three of us literally felt like goosebumps, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe never the chicken cold. pox. <laughs> maybe a chicken pox. <laughs> goosebumps as you know, like as we sang it, and um, and we, and after that we were just flooded with messages, you know, from people saying, you know, what a great song. Not only that, it's a great, um, you know, like it's, it, it's got a great message behind it, but the song carries the message so well. My fan base is is is, is you know a certain demographic, but I'm getting so many messages from a different demographic as well now, um, and I think also with my fans. Here. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've stolen some of his fans, <laughs> stolen some of <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, what I'm seeing is that a lot of people feel exactly the same way. We can complain all day, or we can write a song, make a positive statement, and hope that it catches on. South Africa is our country, and everybody must come on board, you know, to keep this boat afloat. Well, you guys are all solo artists in your own right, but how do you feel you complement each other? So we understand we're not competing. This is, this is a col collaborative art. This is not trying to outsing each other, this, uh, although I can outsing all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this is, this is not about that. This is about, and especially, if you're gonna save a country, the last thing we want is egos. You know, we want people who wanna come together and say, how can we do this together? So it was really, in that regard, it was really easy for me. It's symbolic for me about also mm -hmm. our, our cultural backgrounds coming together and, and creating something unique. And I think that is the message that we want to get across, is that, you know, we don't have to all be the same, but we can be all united mm. in, in the same spirit. And that is what it's about. For a catch-up on other good news happening for these three musicians, we booked at the Alba Fine Dining Floating Restaurant, managed by Andrew Mattison. Andrew, this is such a unique concept. What inspired the idea? We saw a wonderful opportunity to, to put together a restaurant boat to cruise around the, the Cape Town Harbour. And the challenge was to, to design a boat that have, had a full-on kitchen on board, because typically on, in, in boats, the food is made on land and then brought onto the boat. While toasting their collaboration, Mr. Bala has his personal good tidings to celebrate. So Luisa, you and Jennifer have just been blessed with another beautiful daughter. How has fatherhood changed your life? Fatherhood has changed my life for the better. I really used to love traveling, and now I just can't wait to be home so that I can be with my daughters. And the wonderful thing is that, you know, Top Billing has really sort of documented um, my whole life from the time like when I was, when I got married to Jennifer, that was on, and also when Kenzie and I went to the Drakensberg. And I never, in my wildest dreams, ever thought that, you know, I'd ever be so blessed. I feel like I've actually kind of been 
a father for longer than I've actually been just alone. <laughs> and it's just been absolutely amazing. Well, Neville, you are a Grammy Award nominee for the song titled How Awesome Is Our God. What did that do for your career and what was the experience like? I guess as a singer and as a musician, you know, you always think of the awards, you always watch the awards. But in my case, I never thought that I would one day be there. You in the same venue with like the Taylor Swifts of this world and the Beyonce's and so on. It is really unbelievable because I'm from Kalkstenfontein, you know, on the Cape Flats. It really made me feel like I wanted to come back to Cape Town and just let every Cape Townian know that, hey, we can do this. Louis, so you've been sharing the stage with heavyweights throughout the years, such as Alton John, John Legend and Will Smith. How is it that you got to meet these guys and what has it done for your career? It was awesome. Um, I got to perform with some of those guys when I, when I was traveling to, to Madiba's birthdays. So his 90th birthday, which happened in, um, in Hyde Park, London, and then also his 91st, which was at Radio City Music Hall. Now, obviously, you know, when I meet these guys, I'm like, okay, cool, what can I learn from them? Um, um, so, that, so that I can probably become like them one day. And you know what the craziest thing is? They are the most humble people that you've ever, ever met. So it was a bit of a wake up call to me because it kind of said, you know what? It's never about what, what sort of a hype you can build up upon yourself, but it's always gonna be about how you serve people and also how humble you remain. Well, Hans, I believe there's a hidden talent in you in the form of beatboxing. Is there any chance we can hear some of it? Let's oh, wow. Yeah. Are you guys ready? It's time to love again. It's Time to make a stand, let every tribe and tongue unite and be as one. Oh, 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 it's time to love again. It's time to make a stand, let's sing in one accord. Then we will, we will serve the Lord. I'm just impressed you know the lyrics. That was the <laughs>